Hey guys, this is Jay Ferrugia, and you are listening to the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast with Chris and Eric Martinez. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode on the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. We have the one and only Jason Ferrugia here. Jason, how you doing? I'm great. Thank you guys for having me. Man, the pleasure is all ours. Man, you're like an OG in the fitness <laughs> yeah. industry. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, Very true. it's been a long time coming too. I, what's cool is like we were talking before we started the show, um, just about like the little circle of friends that we all know, and just all really good people like Craig Valentine, Bedros, Adam Bornstein. I mean, it, it's really cool, you know. And just um, you know, we're excited just to you know interview you. I know you're gonna drop a lot of wisdom, so I'll try. I'll try. Yeah. But you know, it's funny on the, on the way over. I was listening to Howard Stern Best of 2018, and I was listening to Snoop talk, mm-hmm. and uh, he was talking about Jay Z and Nas and all these different guys. And uh, he said, "I don't view any of these guys as competition." And I was thinking, "Oh, that's amazing!" Like all the guys that you just mentioned. There's so many people who struggle and never achieve success because they're trying to beat everybody. They're trying to compare themselves. They're trying to be better than everybody. But like. I don't view Joe DeFranco or Luca or Smitty or any of those guys as competition. Maybe when I was younger, like mm-hmm. in my late twenties, when I first started getting online, I might have. But like, I just learned from everybody. I'm inspired yeah. by everybody. Right. I mean, I just I have so much love for all those guys and and, and you guys. Like, it's it's just different. Like, I, I approach life differently now than I used to, yeah. and I think that's uh, just having this circle of friends is amazing. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. it's just a lot of it's ego. You know, it's like totally. you said, like late twenties, like you're just very competitive. Like you yeah. don't have all that experience, and like you see all these people just like doing great, and you're like, damn, like I need to get on that level. Like, how do I beat these guys? Yeah, like, exactly. Or that should get, be me. Yeah. 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 But as you get older, it's like, man, you got to kind of build that tribe and that alliance. Yeah. Know? It's like, why not help each other out? You know, and just keep learning from each other. Totally. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Right on, man. So um, we kind of like to open up the show with a little bit of like humor. Um, what is like the funniest thing that's happened to you in twenty? I know we're almost at the end of 2018, but what's a funny story? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> hmm. So many. I wish you guys would prepare me for this. I can't <laughs> think off the top of my head. That's the best part. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> uh, I got nothing. I can't. Uh, uh, can we come back to we this? Can back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We've had other guests where they're just like kind of stumped and like, oh, shit. But yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. Okay. I know there's been a lot. I can't think of one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, cir- we'll circle back. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, Jason, so basically, man, you've been helping men become like the strongest version of themselves mm-hmm. since 1994. You know, so what was like that big driving force, like that burning desire to want to help men like become the strongest version of themselves? Well, so I mean, it started as as an insecure, weak, skinny kid, not the best athlete, and <clears throat> I grew up kind of obsessed with professional wrestling and watching like Hulk Hogan, the ultimate warrior and watching uh, Schwarzenegger and Stallone on the big screen. Mm-hmm. So I was like, man, I want to be one of these larger than life kind of, uh, you know, real life action figures or whatever. And so that was what got me into training. Uh, I'd like to say it was for sports, but it wasn't. It was just because I was skinny and insecure and weak. Uh, and it, it made me better at sports, but at that point it was kind of too late. Like I was already, but as I, got bigger and stronger, my confidence grew for sure. And it helped me do a lot of things. It helped me in every aspect of my life, kind of like Arnold's talked about. But there came a point where I realized, okay, I'm really just a bigger, stronger version of that insecure, shy, quiet, introverted kid. And I need to work on other stuff. So now that's really been my journey the last eight years since I moved to LA. And now, I just appreciate like a more holistic approach, right? Like body, mind, spirit, yeah. and 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 because I, I see the difference that that made. So when I first got here, that was my whole thing. Like I was like, okay, I know enough about training, I know enough about business. Let me put that stuff on the back burner for a while, and let me just work on personal development and fixing all the stuff that's wrong here and here. Right. And once I did that, I was like, man, this has made such a dramatic difference, more so than gaining eighty pounds and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's the combination of being physically strong, mentally strong, emotionally strong. If you can tie that all in, you know, that's that's dramatic. And so so that's why I love kind of helping people because I know that when you have all those areas dialed in, man, life is amazing. Yeah. yeah. And where do you think like the insecurity and like the low self esteem, low confidence all kind of stem from in the beginning? Yeah, I just want to just piggyback on that. Did like your parent uh, growing up, did your parents like push you to like play sports, to just kind of just think outside the box and just do other things? So I played sports as a kid. Okay. I was never great. <laughs> uh, far from great and but a, a lot of this stuff came from the way I grew up well for, first of all by being just like skinny and weak like I was always getting beat up by kids stuff in the locker I still remember every single day 
I remember the, the names of the kids who beat the crap out of me. And the funny thing is, I, I must have repressed that deep down somewhere because I wouldn't have named, the, like if you guys gave me a million dollars, I could not name those guys three years ago. But I took an edible and went to a float tank one time. <laughs> and I, I, it came to me when I came home and I was telling my wife, I, I, I walked in the door, I go, Joel Cameron, Ed Richards, and Jeff Scotty, Rick Braun. She goes, what? I was like, <laughs> oh, those yeah. are the kids that beat the crap out of me every single day. And I had all these breakthroughs about why I had this chip on my shoulder and why I did certain things and why I was a certain way in my early 20s and I wanted to beat everybody and all this stuff. So uh, it was that and it was also the fact that growing up, like I love my mom's death and we have a really close relationship now, but it was a lot of turmoil in the house. Like my grandfather uh, was Scottish and he was an alcoholic and he was just like in brawls all the time. He was in the Navy. So he was angry as could be. That got passed down to my mom. She had uh, drinking issues when I was younger, and my dad, they had an awful relationship. So every single night, it was just screaming, bottles breaking, doors slamming, and I remember just being behind my, my door as a little kid, like, oh my God, when is this gonna end? Mm -hmm. And then my dad would've come home, you know, for the 15th time, maybe cheating on my mom or something, and she's crying her eyes out, and I gotta go down, and I gotta go for school in the morning, and I'm like a little kid carrying her up to, to, to bed at night, you know? And, so that, that leaves a lot of kind of scars and, yeah, and issues and, and you're just like, man, I don't want to talk to anybody. Um, so th that was a lot of it, just the anger, the insecurity. Yeah. So I, I, and I held on to that for so many years. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's something I can definitely relate on. Um, I don't know if you remember, we, our father passed away when we were 18 years old, senior year of high school, three days before Christmas. Yeah. And I'll never forget that day, you know, when the, the chaplain and the police officer came and knocked on the door, told my mom that he passed away. and. She just crumbled like a piece of paper, man. I'll never forget that. You know, a piece of her went, you know, that night with him. Sure. Right? So she battled alcoholism, you know, mm -hmm. antidepressants and stuff like that. And we were the most angriest guys for six years, you oh, know, wow. battling with the law, just like drinking a lot, partying a lot, just making stupid decisions. So I can definitely relate with that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Definitely tough. Yeah. So with kind of what Chris said, you know, that's, we're really big on just overcoming adversity. I mean, it's going to get thrown at you left and right um, in life. I'm sure you know that. You said you've battled like a lot of adversity and obstacles. What has been the biggest one that you've had to overcome and how has that turned into a blessing in disguise? Uh, there's so many, but I, I don't want to get stumped on a question again. So I would say <laughs> one was uh, when I had my gym for 12 years and the building was being sold and I was I was crushing, like I was doing so well. I, you know, I had probably in, in an average day, I would have 70 athletes coming in and, and, and really happy, really like at the peak of my career. The building got sold, every tenant in the building had a certain amount of time, I can't remember how long we were given, to find another place, to be out, because the new owner was gonna do something completely new. And long story short, I never found a place. I, I went through the zoning board with a lawyer, we couldn't get the new place that I wanted, and I was basically shut down, and I, had, I was gonna have no income coming in, so I was out of my mind, I was losing it at the time. And I felt like, well, this is it, this is all I've ever done, what am I gonna do? And I was on the phone a lot with Alan Cosgrove and Dave Tate during those times. And they were like, look, you know, for the last five years, you've been working 18 hours a day, you're, you're burnt out. Maybe it's just a blessing in disguise and it's, it's time for a break. Mm -hmm. So I kind of regrouped and, and it did turn out to be a blessing in disguise because that was the time that I was able to start putting info out online, mm -hmm. start getting my name out, start building the online business. If that never happened, who knows? I mean, I'm sure eventually I would have done it, but that really was the impetus and the stimulus for me to start cranking and like, right. okay, I'm losing all this income. And eventually we were able, able to open the gym again uh, a year or so later. And I may do in the time like I was able to figure out other options, but it, it was a rough patch there for a while. But you know, it was, it was a blessing in disguise. Yeah, and how old were you though when you were going through that? Like, was uh, I was third 30. Okay. Yeah. And then what do you do? You, do you see like that a lot of a lot of like entrepreneurs now in like today's society where it's just go 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 like team no sleep just grind grind grind. Do you, do you yeah. see like the that that like effect on people and like why what do you, why do you think that, that is like in today's society that people are just programmed like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just the, the whole culture we live in. Like yeah. the grind don't stop, always on my grind. All that, <laughs> all those stupid hashtags and all that, and we wear it of a bad, as a badge of honor. And there, you know, there's hip hop songs about it. And I get that. Like I have this right relentless tattoo to my form. Like it's in my DNA to work like that, but you can't do that all the time. It's exactly. just not healthy. Mm -hmm. And so, so you have to prioritize relationships, having fun, 
Like, and, and, and at the end of the day, like we all recharge this, but you have to recharge yourself. Like, exactly. recharge your phone. You gotta recharge yourself. Mm -hmm. You gotta. Uh, so some of the smartest entrepreneurs, like Richard Branson. Richard Branson's never hashtagging always on my grind. Like he plans and he recommends you plan your vacations ahead of time. And so I've really shifted my priorities the last few years. And, and the reality is, if you're if you're working hard and smart and effectively, by hour sixteen, you're not getting anything done. Right. Like now I, I get as much done in six hours that I used to in 16. I have a much better life where I can just do whatever. Like someone says, hey, you want to go hike in the middle of the day? You want to go to the comedy store tonight? Yeah, sure. I can take off any time I want because I know that from 6 a.m. till 10, I've gotten everything done that I need to do. So it's all good, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And something <coughs> you mentioned on your website when you were dealing with all the adversity that you are going through that, you know, um, podcasts, audiobooks, reading, attending seminars, hiring mentors, coaches, that really kind of helped you out and kind of changed your mindset. So what was it like about all that, just like consuming, you know, podcasts, reading, mentors, it kind of really shifted your mindset and helped you kind of like see that light at the end of the tunnel? Well, I think that, uh, first of all, everybody should invest in themselves. Yeah. Like you have to have accountability, Absolutely. you have to have outside eyes, you have to have coaches. Mm -hmm. And I always say this to anybody who runs any kind of coaching business. Like, if you don't have a coach at least once a year for something, for your fitness, for your business, for your mindset, for relationships, whatever it is, then you're self sabotaging your own business because you're subconsciously saying, Well, I don't believe in what I sell. Right. So, you should always invest in yourself. And then, yeah, I mean, but, but, but there's a fine line there. So, early on, I did what a lot of people are guilty of I just consumed information and didn't do anything with it. And I was racing to read more books. Like, if I could go back, I probably only read a quarter of the books that I read, you know, because like how many business books do you need to read? It was that FOMO. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you're keeping up like, oh, oh my God, my buddy's reading seven books a week. I gotta read eight. You know, it's like insane. And I couldn't even remember anything I was reading. Right. So now I've made a practice the last few years to go back through. I, I got rid of so many books. So I had like my five favorite training books, my five favorite business books, personal development, and little other areas. And I'll go through, like last night I was just sitting on the couch and going through highlights of one of my favorite books. Yeah. So I'll, I'll reread some of the other ones. Yeah. And uh, I, don't, I don't remember who it was, but, but they said if you just read 10 books and got to know them, I 100% agree with this, and got to know them inside out and could teach them, you'd be smarter than 99.9% <laughs> exactly. of people on the planet, yeah. you know? Exactly. Are there so, any little tricks that you do, like when you read or something like that, to like, you know, really acquire that knowledge and like make it stick or teach or something like that? Yeah, so first of all, I, I highlight the crap out of everything, mm -hmm. and then when I finish it, uh, I immediately teach it. So even if it's not in a formal setting, like I'll just go to lunch with a friend and be like, hey, check this out. Because teaching it uh, is, you know, teaching is one of the best ways of learning, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll teach it, Usually I'll write something about it, like uh, maybe on an Instagram post or an email. And uh, and then what I do is I'll go through, if it's a really good book, I used to do this for every book and that became insanity. But now if it's a really good book, I'll spend a, uh, a half hour, I'll go through my best highlights and I'll talk and text them and then I'll put that on a, uh, a sheet and print it out, double sided and then laminate it. Yeah. And then so I could just go and flip through those and then nice. that way I can get rid of the books, awesome. you know? Uh, so that's what I do. Cool. And I remember too, you were really heavily into writing as well too. Are you still pretty active with just just writing? No, so I used to write, man, I've written, I can't even tell you how many thousands of yeah. articles. I used to write every single day and I would wake up and just crank out article after article. And nowadays it's more just an Instagram post okay. basically. And then I'll, I'll write some emails, but a lot of times I'll just copy and paste my Instagram post into an email. Yeah. So, so I don't write anywhere, uh, anywhere as much as I used to. And one of the reasons being that I used to write more than I would podcast or do videos because I was still super insecure. So I didn't want to be seen on camera gotcha. or be heard because I was like, oh, I don't like the sound of my voice. What if I sound stupid? Like I had all the, and I, honestly, I didn't even tell people that story until uh, 2018, like mm -hmm. it's spring of 2018. I was at an event speaking and I was like, nobody knows this, but the reason I had, and I had 500,000 people a month come to my blog, but I was like, the reason that in all those days I never did videos or audio or anything was like, I was just still too insecure at yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah. But still, I, I feel like too, like even nowadays, like Instagram posts are almost kind of like a form of like blogging. There's just yeah. like many blogs, right? Yeah. So where it's like, you just write all the content, you're putting out your message, you're speaking to, you know, your yeah. audience. So 
yeah, I mean, you still have that skill, and it's just like I remember reading some of your uh, stuff, and I was just like, man, this guy's a good writer. Yeah, so right. that's why I just asked that. You kept it real too, man. That's what I like. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean, like you just for yourself, you know, you would cuss on there and just say stuff, and it's yeah. like that's what it's about. You know, we're always just referring to like the hip hop stuff too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> right on. So this is uh, our podcast is centered around lifestyle. We're huge on you know people's lifestyles, um, in particular our guests. Um, Chris and I are kind of weird about that. So please walk us through a day in your life. And I want to know how you program your mind to play offense, not defense. And is there one vital habit that has just built a ton of success for you on a day-to-day basis? I love that offense, not defense thing. Because if you wake up and you're reactive instead of proactive. So if you wake up and this is the first thing you do, your day's over. So that's first and foremost. Like everything has to be turned off. You can't be reacting. You got to be proactive and play offense first and foremost. So... I wake up or meditate. I used to meditate for 30 minutes. And I think a lot of people go through that whole morning routine thing where all of a sudden your morning routine is this long and you're like, dude, my day's <laughs> over. You know what I mean? So I've, I've trimmed it down over time yeah. where I'll meditate for five minutes. But nowadays what I'll do is I'll meditate for five minutes, usually three to five times throughout the day. So I still get 15 to 30 minutes. But instead of sitting there for 30, I just do it. Like if I'm stressed out in the middle of the day, I'll just walk out to the beach like I said yesterday cool. or something. Yeah. Um, so I meditate for five minutes, I'll read for 20 minutes. So I do two things. Uh, I'll read a passage from the Tao Te Ching or uh, Epictetus, and then I'll read whatever book I'm currently reading. But like I said before, I only read, I'd say three books a month now, mm-hmm. versus like three a that's week. Yeah. yeah, that's still, that's still yeah. good. Yeah, so whatever book I'm currently reading, so I'll block that off because at the end of the day, if I'm going to bed, at 10 o'clock and I haven't read, I'll be stressed out. And I caught that happening sometimes when I'm just had a really busy day. So I know, let me just get it in because I feel like I, I need to read every day. Right. So I do that, I write in a journal, and so I write three things I'm grateful for, three people I'm grateful for, and then I write out uh, goals and affirmations every day. And uh, what's funny recently about that is uh, uh, I've had probably four or five things happen where two of my friends, two of my friends made the same joke in two separate conversations. They're like, Bro, did you ghostwrite the secret? Because you're manifesting the shit out of everything you're saying. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry, can we curse on it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't, I'm an Italian from Jersey. Huh? <laughs> so, uh, so there's definitely power in that, you know? Yeah. And, and, and putting yourself in those positions. And uh, But anyway, so, so I do that, and then I'll have a most important task that I have to do at home in front of the computer. Which it used to be way more at home in front of the computer stuff. Now it's uh, a lot more in person and stuff. So I'll do that and spend about an hour on that. And then I take the dogs out for uh, at least a 30 minute walk during that time. Usually listen listen to a podcast, come back, uh, hit the next most important thing. Only then will I get into email. And I also only check email twice a day. Okay. And I use like little blocking apps and stuff like that. Yeah, I need to get better at that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, And then the rest of the day is always kind of up in the air. Like it might be, I go and, and I'm working with somebody, like sometimes someone will just reach out to me, like a high level athlete or someone, or I go train with somebody, I go train myself, um, but then all over the place, you know, getting ready for the next podcast, recording the podcast, yeah. all kinds of stuff like that. And I'm sure too, I mean, you're married, so I mean, you have to sometime like shut it off and yeah. wind down, so yeah. yeah. Is there yeah. anything you do to like wind down, like just at night that just like- Edibles. Edibles. <laughs> Edibles. Chris, we gotta get started. Yeah. <laughs> no, I try to. Uh, I mean, I definitely turn my phone off at yeah. a certain point. I bring, you know, there's no computer. Like I'm not, I'm never, you're, I'm never in the living room on my laptop. Like that, that never happens. So computer's off, phone's off, and what else? Eh, that's about it. But quite honestly, even though I was joking. There are some days that I have found, like I, I didn't get into weed, like I said to you guys, until four years ago. Right. Because I came from like the East Coast, hard working mentality. Oh, if, if you smoke weed, you're, you're a degenerate, you're a loser, you're a slacker, you're not going anywhere. And I thought it was like this gateway drug and all that. And then you just want to eat Doritos all day. Like, you know that happens. <laughs> yeah. When I got out here, all of a sudden, so many people that I admire and respect that have seven figure businesses and are crushing it or in the fitness industry were into that whole thing. Like, that's big out here, you know? And so I got into it, and now I'm like, dude, I just see the benefits. Like, I sleep incredibly well, mm-hmm. my joints feel better in the morning. And the reality is, 
the world we live in with phones and all the exposure and just driving down the like it's not natural it's not normal we're not designed to live in this world so right. if you have to use plant medicine to chill out once in a while like i don't think you're failing i don't yeah, think there's right. anything wrong with that absolutely yeah. it's yeah. hard for me to turn it off sometimes 100 percent. So, so, so if i pop a five milligram edible and sit on the couch and watch Chappelle, like that's how I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah. all, yeah, like yeah. We all have our little fix and yeah. like our way to just kind of just wind down and that's yeah. fine. Like I said, I agree a hundred percent what you say about like, we're not programmed to live like this. I mean, yeah. it's just sometimes fucking ridiculous. Like yeah. just, especially out here in LA, how it's just go, go, go. And it's just yeah. like, it's overwhelming sometimes. So mm-hmm. um, I see why you can do that. Yeah. Like, you don't get some beers in on the weekends, man, after like the week. Especially, yeah. especially dealing with this guy. Um, <laughs> with this guy. Yeah. That's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I do like I like again. I meditate. I get a massage at least once a week. Nice. I do sauna ideally every day, but I'll do sauna at least three days a week for thirty minutes. I do cryo. I get out on the beach. So all that stuff plays a huge yeah. role, and my sleep is better at forty four than it ever was my entire life. So that's first and foremost. And even, but I'm saying even with that all dialed in, with the insanity of life, sometimes sometimes you need something. Yeah, you need it man, you look early. You look like you're in your early thirties. Oh, yeah, man. see, that's amazing. I mean, it just goes to show that yeah. all that stuff pays off, though. It's, yeah, I'm such a big proponent on that. Yeah, yeah. seriously. All right, man. So let's say that one morning, you know, you're doing your morning routine, and all of a sudden, like your phone's like making this weird sound. You have to check it, mm-hmm. you know. And it's a text message from Mark Zuckerberg, and he goes, "Jay, he's like, I love what you're doing. He's like, I want to help you spread your your mission, your message to billions of people across Instagram and Facebook. Mm-hmm. I'm going to grant you a 10 minute video. It's going to last for two days, and it's going to reach billions and billions of people. What would that message be, and why? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I could only have one thing to say. I would probably just talk to guys over 40, really, and if I had to just dial it down and know that it would get the most attention, I would just talk about strength and conditioning mainly over 40 and like how training for longevity and health more so than anything. I mean, there's a million things I would like to talk about, but if I, I could just do that, it would be training guys like, uh, you know, joint health, uh, all, all the kind of stuff that's become more important to me as I've gotten older. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I see so many guys, uh, professional athletes, professional wrestlers, and just regular guys my age who, and I did the same thing when I was in my 20s, just train like an idiot, beat the shit out of yourself, same. joints hurt, your mobility's awful. Yeah. So I, I would just basically do a 10 minute diatribe on that, like here's how you need to focus on your training. Because the reality is if you're in pain, everything in your life suffers. Like it sucks yeah. being, I mean, think about when you have a bad headache or like if you, if you break your arm or something or whatever, you just have an injury from the gym, like everything suffers. Your relationship sh- suffers, yeah. you're in a bad mood, yeah. you can't focus, you can't sleep. And most people walk around in some kind of pain if they've been lifting heavy for a long time, lifting like an idiot. So getting people out of pain, uh, I think really, and, and I do like, you know, like again with, with some athletes, being able to extend their careers. You know, I look at friends of mine who are high level prof- professional athletes and like, man, you should not be doing that. We want you to play another three, four, six years, whatever it might be. Here's what we're gonna stop doing immediately. Here's what we're gonna start doing immediately. So, yeah, that that's a good message. I like how you said like get people out of pain. Yes, yeah. man. There's nothing worse than being like in physical pain, emotional pain, yeah, mental, spiritual, whatever it is. You know what I mean? So I like yeah. that. It's a good message. Yeah, and I feel too like um, you're you're kind of saying to just like keep it simple. So mm-hmm. simplicity, and totally. you say that that's yeah. like really key to health, wealth, and happiness. And yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the 80-20 rule? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of that in every aspect. Like, from, from my nutrition, I basically eat, I'd say, like, seven foods every day. So I don't get, I don't freak out about I'm not getting enough variety. Like, I figured out what works for me. Uh, with training, I've gone back and all my programs. And it's funny because I know a lot of high-level strength coaches that you kind of go through that same thing. And it's like, like Bruce Lee talked about when, as a beginner, everything's super simple. And then you get more advanced and things are super complicated and then you get to mastery level and everything's really simple again yeah and so i know so many people oh. who have who have done that same kind of thing where the more advanced they get the simpler the program has become less variety less exercise selection stuff like that so and then i apply that to, again a nutrition training business totally to like there's probably only three business books you need to read yep. and there's probably only uh a few things that you need to be doing in business like everyone could wake up every day and say, I should do Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, podcast, the blog, this, that, and the other thing. 
and all these different marketing channels, but what really makes the difference? You know, what's really gonna move the needle or what's really gonna break the needle instead of move the needle? Like what's the, the, the thing that's really going to get you more customers, make you more money? That's the most important thing. So always evaluating that in every aspect of your life, I think is super important. Yeah, I, I agree because that reminds me of like an acronym that I just even stress to my students is KISS, right? Keep mm-hmm. it simple, stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just, we love that 80-20 rule just with ourselves. I mean, we pretty yeah. much, preach that and just live by that because I mean nobody is 100% on and it's like if you are it's like there's other shit around you that's just going to kind of fold yeah yeah and that's why some of my favorite books are the one thing essential is the one principle I think I just reread those and whatever like I mentioned you guys earlier when I start straying and doing too many things I was like all right it's time to reread those and just go through my highlights yeah Yeah. Yeah. absolutely yeah Um, so what are you currently reading right now uh, I just read, it's called Play On. It's the science of high performance at any age. So okay. it's all about the stuff I was just talking about, like yeah. the Facebook thing. Yeah, it's awesome. really cool, a bunch okay. of good info in there. Uh, I just read that. I just read Pedros' book. And what else did I read recently? Uh, those two. Oh, then I'm starting uh, James Clear's Habits book. Oh, uh, the Atomic Habits. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that's really good. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, our roommate has it right there. I didn't want to steal it from him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but something too um, that I wanted to ask was just, like all, all, so you said you're about to be 39. No, I'm 44. 44. 44. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, because I thought you said like Bedros. Some... When you guys were 39, you told that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 44. We, we were blowing it out for the last year yeah. of our 30s. So let's say, man, that like you were walking down the beach in Santa Monica, just kind of like you know getting you know your your your, your breaths and just kind of taking a break from work mm-hmm. and all that stuff, and then you kind of walk by like this like shadow, and it's a 25 year old version of yourself. And knowing like, you know, what you know now, all the experiences you've been through, what would you tell that 25-year-old version of yourself that you know now? I'd say, man, I had a humongous edible. I can't believe I'm seeing myself. <laughs> this is crazy. I must have dosed that incorrectly. <laughs> Jesus. That was good. That was good. <laughs> wow. Uh, I, would, I, I would tell myself a few things. One, nobody is judging you as much as you think. Like It's all in your own head. Mm-hmm. People want you to succeed. I think nowadays, especially... People have this mis- misconception where you know so many of the YouTube comments are negative and this and that. So it's like, oh, the world's full of haters, and everybody's like, haters, haters gonna hate and all this shit. Like, mm-hmm. I don't live in that world. That that doesn't. That's not true. I think the majority of people are good and they want you to succeed. I believe that a hundred percent. Like, if, if you guys, if we're in, in uh, if we went down to Staples Center and somebody gets up to speak and it's the first time speaking. The audience isn't crossing their fingers going, I hope this guy sucks and shits his pants. Everyone's like, I want this guy to succeed because if he can get up and speak in front of of this whole audience, that's inspiration for me. I want to do it. You know, like you guys, I think you guys are pretty much younger. How how much younger are you guys? 33. 33. All right, yeah, yeah. So like you guys are doing way better at your age than I, like that inspires me because I'm like, man, I wish I had it as together as you guys do, you know (laughs) what I mean? So like find inspiration from everybody. Uh, so nobody's judging you as, as much as you think. It's all in your own head. People want you to succeed. That would really be the main thing. I think that would be the, the number one thing I would say. And do you think like the, the judging uh, and that like kind of limiting belief that you had, you know, at that time was stemming from like your background and kind of like growing up and stuff like that? Yeah, for okay. sure. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so so another thing I, I would say is, is, is find the time to work on that stuff sooner. Yeah. I wish I addressed that. I wish I worked on personal development Same. and all my issues, yeah. you know, 10, 15 years earlier. Yeah. Like I, I just I just did that stuff that, that we do. It was just like nose to the grind, hustling, working, training, and that was it. And I was like, oh, all that baggage, well, I'll address that another time. Or I did what so many people do is, and this is awful that people think this, but they think as I get older, I'll get better. I'll be better with people, I'll be more uh, confident, I'll be more secure, I'll be a better communicator, I'll be a better listener, I'll be a better husband. None of that's true. (laughs) Not not. even remotely. It's not. Like you don't evolve and grow just because you've been around for another year. Like you have to work on it. That would be like me saying when I'm 20, I'm never going to play guitar, but at 44 I'll be able to play it like Jimi Hendrix if I never touch the guitar, you know? You have to work on this stuff every single day. So true. And even if we use like the context of health, right, health and fitness, you see so many like young kids these days where it's like, yeah, they're making a ton of money, blah, 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 driving all these fancy cars, but they look like they're like 30, 40 years old, Mm. right? It's like (laughs) their body structures are all hunched over. It's like, man, you can chase and make all this money, but you're not even focusing on your health. And it's like, that's gonna backfire. Like, I'm sorry, but you can't sit there and make all this money and reverse all that stuff that you're doing to your body. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anything has to be sustainable long term. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's funny, like, 
to to, uh, to get into the specifics of training for one second, there was like uh, maybe maybe a month or two ago, maybe it was three months. I don't even remember. A, a study came out showing that forty five sets per body part per week led to more hypertrophy than anything else. And it's so all of a sudden everyone's all up in arms. Oh my god, I got to do tw- five times the volume I'm doing now. <laughs> And people ask me what I thought. I was like, I don't think anything of it. I think the same thing I thought 10 years ago because I know what works. I know it's sustainable. And I know that you're going to destroy your joints if you start trying that. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> you, you, like, if you need to think about, like when you're talking about those people or anybody, think about what you're doing. Are you going to be doing it for just one or two years? Okay, maybe then you can do that burnout pace. But if you want to do it for a lifetime, whether it's your business or training or whatever, you got to take a different approach. It's got to be sustainable and realistic. Yeah, 100%, 100% agree. Yeah. So Jason, like with all the success you've had, um, all the stuff that you've accomplished, is there anything that you're currently missing right now in your life? What am I currently missing besides a rap album? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Th- things things are really good. I, just, I mean, one thing that does come to mind is I do miss having my own gym. Gotcha. So I haven't had it for eight years. So I had one for fifteen years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I do miss that a lot, and because of the way things have shaping up the last few months and what's on the docket for next year having my own place to to train and to, to work with some people would be really yeah. cool uh that i would say i mean i'm just so grateful though like I, I can't believe the life i have right now so i don't really want for that much like i have so many amazing relationships and that that's first and foremost the number one most important thing to me so i don't measure my success in dollars and stuff like that i really love and my closest friends will tell you that like i'll drop anything just to hang out with my closest friends and that to me, like to be able to just spend time with amazing people like that, it's just like I, I can't even believe this is my life. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. I love that. And is there any weaknesses like that you want to like work on like in twenty nineteen or anything like that? Dude, I'm flawless. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What kind of question is that? Uh, what do I need to work on in twenty nineteen? I do need. I feel like I probably could be a better leader from a business perspective with my team. Uh, something so sometimes things get so crazy and I'm out in the front and I don't think I spend enough time with them uh, so I, I, and reading Bedros's book was like yeah I was like man yeah I it's a good work. book yeah so I, I need to work on that more in 2019 that that's something that stands out for sure yeah. okay yeah is there anything like you've ever like dreamed of like that you know when you were a kid that maybe you wanted to do but you never did it uh, Hmm. That maybe you can kind of like pursue now or even just in the next couple of years? Yeah, so I, I would love to, uh, how many years ago now? Maybe six years ago, I started improv at cool. Second City. Oh, and yeah. absolutely love That's it. That's where all these jokes things. are coming from. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing improv. And then I took uh, a stand-up class and it, it was okay. And I, I was terrible at it. Because stand-up is, more, like improv, there's no real homework. You mm-hmm. can't really practice unless you get together with people that know what they're doing. But with stand-up, it was a lot of homework, and I already have a lot of homework, like writing and preparing all kinds of stuff on it. So I didn't want to write all the time. So I, I didn't give it my best. So I, I want to get back into stand-up. And I do have this vision for a couple of years about doing like a one-man show where it's part like inspirational and motivational talking, but right. a, lot, a, lot, a lot of comedy involved okay. as well. So that's something I want to work on. Because I do really love public speaking, yeah. and I do like uh, being on stage and making people laugh and incorporating humor and storytelling. So yeah. that's something yeah. I want to work on. I can on see you sure. do that, man. I just want to tell you a quick story. Like we actually oh, took yeah, an improv time. class earlier this year. <laughs> that was one of our big goals. I oh, mean, that, that's Where, where did you go? Uh, OC West. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it was good. Like it was great. I mean, there were like three hour classes once per week and yeah. holy shit, man. Like it, it was so uncomfortable and it was just, it was so challenging and I, I got yeah. frustrated. We got very frustrated. But um, because we're just used to doing like YouTube videos, Mm -hmm. like just doing content, 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 educating. But that was an amazing test. Oh, it's amazing. It got real uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 But I I think, and I did it for a couple of years consecutively, I think so highly of it that it should be required in high school and college. It teaches you (laughs) so much stuff, like Mm -hmm. thinking on your feet, uh, listening to your partner, make your partner look look good, just listening skills in general. Yes, yeah. yeah listening yeah absolutely and then it just gets you up there like everyone's number one fear is public speaking so you're getting up a lot practicing yeah, yeah. It, it, it helped to be in like in that setting and that group of like supportive people like everyone's up there just making a fool of themselves it's like no one's judging so it's like yeah. that was definitely like you know comforting but yeah. yeah i have a lot of respect for people that were doing that because i went to a couple like good shows like the the, the pros and i was yeah. like oh, blown amazing. away yeah, yeah. 
You guys should check out. Uh, well, I'll tell you after. This, this is a really good show. It's at, in the San. I'll just tell you. Santa Monica uh, West Side Theater every okay. Friday and Saturday night. It's called really? Mission Improbable. Yeah. Right on, man. You see, see it. always looking for okay. things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, <clears throat> so going into twenty nineteen, is there anything that you're willing to sacrifice for a cost? And the example I give, man, and, and you can relate to this because you work with NFL players. NFL players, the, the sacrifice they're willing to give is beat the shit out of their bodies, right? For, you know, that's the cost, you know, for the sacrifice, you know, to make millions, you know, have that platform that they have to inspire others, stuff like that. Is there anything that you're willing to sacrifice for a cost in 2019? Well, off the top of my head, I, I've done this a couple times and I will sacrifice making money for a less stressful life and more happiness and more of a singular focus. So I'm gonna turn off certain aspects of my business in 2019, which I did Three or four years ago, I, I shut down a, a multi six figure income stream just because it was driving me insane. Mm. And uh, hopefully, that, that that's a, a good lesson for a lot of people. Like, you know, just because it makes you money, it might not make you happy. Right. And money can't buy you happiness. I mean, up to a certain point, it can, but <clears throat> then you get into like Biggie said, more money, more problems. Yeah, Sometimes yeah, it, exactly. it just depends, you know. Like, I remember when I read Tim Ferriss's book, uh, the first one, The Four Hour mm-hmm. Work Week, and he said, figure out your ideal lifestyle, reverse engineer, how much does it cost? How uh, reverse engineer your way to make that money? Yeah, and honestly, like a lot of people forgot about that. Yeah, it, oh but God. when I got there, any amount of money I made above that didn't make me any happier. Yeah. And then it's funny recently because of what, you know what what I'm trying to to do for 2019 and have more of a singular focus is I actually, and that's why three months ago I was like, this is getting insane. I'm making the same amount of money for 10 times more work and stress than I was a few years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so I need to change some things again. So that's the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, I like sure. that though, man, yeah. because so many people don't think about that. Like so everybody true. like that's like an entrepreneur on space or whatever, they're like, oh, I need to make a million dollars or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why? Why a million dollars? Yeah, we can do that. Like, why not figure out what you just barely need to support your lifestyle? And then what the hell are you gonna do with all the rest of the money? You know what yeah. I mean? And they freak out about so much pressure on themselves. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, they end up doing something they don't like doing. Yeah. You know? So I like that. Yeah. That's good. So we're coming to a close in 2018. Um, what's next for for you in 2019? Uh, continue to grow the podcast. And I'm, I'm, I'd say 95% sure in 2019 we'll open up a small training facility, nice. which will be great. Any ideas where? Uh, I'm going to say in the Santa Monica, cool. Venice area. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. I can't go so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to leave the mecca and start going there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so th- those two things and what else? Well, I had a couple things on my vision board that I, I will manifest, but I'm I'm not gonna share them yet publicly. Okay. But yeah, th- those two things. Okay. Awesome. Well, man, before we ask the last question, I just want to commend you. You know, number one, you know, thank you for just all the content t- content you put out in the past. You know, like we used to read it, like we said, super authentic. We really resonated with it, so thank Thanks, you for bro. that. And just thank you for coming down here, man. You know, spending some time with us, shedding some wisdom. You know, your knowledge, everything like that, everything you're doing, man. Just like in the fitness industry, and just trying to get better as a person as well, too, in I all different it. areas of life. So I commend you for that. And opening yeah. our eyes to some edibles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should have brought some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I echo everything you said, man. Uh, you know, thanks again just for your time. Uh, this has been great just getting to know you face to face. Um Absolutely. I definitely feel like going forward we're gonna have some sort of relationship going yeah. forward, so I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So with the final question, what does it mean to Jay Furia to live a dynamic lifestyle? I think it's it's the ability to do what I love every day and to spend time with the people that I love. That's so important to me, as I said, and to just create amazing experiences. Um, th- those things mainly. Like it, I never think about money or business or material possessions. It's being able to do what I love and really spend time w- w- with people that I love more than anything. Yeah. And then just, it, it sounds, uh, it's a small thing, but for me, being able to just make people feel better. Like if, 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 if it just read on my tombstone, here lies Jay Ferrugia, he made people feel better. Like I would be okay with that if that's all I ever did. Like just meeting people, smiling, complimenting, shaking hands, like talking to people, stopping to talk to the old lady who has no one to talk to her, yeah, you know what I mean? Just like, smile at someone walking by. Yeah, yeah, I like all that. I like the fact that I now am consciously not always in a rush and always grinding and always working that I can stop and connect with people. Like that's so much more important. Yeah, I could get way more done in a day if I wanted to and if that was my whole thing, but at the end of the day, who cares? Like 
that's not going to mean anything on my deathbed, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, yeah. so. I got to give you 50. Star <laughs> that's star for you. That's Thank something you. I want to work on as well. You know, I just need to get better at that Thank too. Time. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I appreciate that. Awesome. Is there anything that like um, we can support you with currently or our listeners that you want to just even like talk about or anything to announce? No, not really. Uh, not that I can think of. I appreciate it. Okay. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing comes to mind. And where can we find more info on you? Follow you? All that stuff. Yeah. Uh, J dot fit. J a y dot fit. We'll send you to my main site and then renegaderadiopodcast Sounds good, man. We'll have that all linked up in the show notes. Once again, Jason, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. All right. Awesome, guys. Thanks Thanks so much. much. Until next time, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching this podcast video. If you guys are interested in learning how to build your online fitness business, we have two free videos for you guys. The first video is how to build your online fitness business and make more money. And the second one is how to retain your actual online clients so you can sustain your online business. So make sure to click the link in the description box below and access those two videos and wait for the next podcast that comes on.